Hello everybody, I'm Storm here. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode, I attempted to design a single stage to orbit space plane, which I had ever never actually done before. So I was kind of just taking a shot. I was able to put together a pretty decent aircraft, all told. But as a space plane, it just did not work. Could not achieve the altitude and speeds needed to reach space, let alone get to orbit. So, after you know, a few relatively successful you know, atmospheric flights, but no, no space flight, um, decided to kind of call it a day and work on the problem off screen for a little bit. And that's what I've gone ahead and done. And after a few more iterations and uh, some redesign work, I was able to get a vehicle that can achieve orbit so let me show you what i came up with and here it is the ssto mark 5 slingbow significantly larger than the previous design longer wider or longer wings moved the vertical stabilizers out to the wing edge and most notably we are now running eight j7 rapier engines and two lvt60 sv eaglet rocket engines standard rocket engines there and at the front of these nacelles we've got some fairly significant air intakes so they can really breathe we're going to achieve some pretty high altitudes before i have to actually switch over and these fuel tanks are all liquid fuel these fuel tanks are all liquid oxygen or oxidizer and all the fuel tanks in the central fuselage are also oxidizer. All the way down to here. It took some fiddling to get the tanks positioned just correct uh, in position so that our uh, center of mass is just in front of our center of lift. And yeah, otherwise it's pretty much the same basic design but uh, now with all these extra engines this thing gets up and moves and I've already flown a couple of test flights uh, with it achieved orbit and was able to actually perform maneuvers in orbit to rendezvous with both the ballista and the arbalest and dock successfully with both of them and so that's what we're going to go ahead and do again. Well, and because this is crewed, I was able to actually get the um, the rotating structure, the centrifugal structure on both vehicles deployed. I have, they haven't activated them yet, but they are now deployed and ready to go. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take up our first crew to the ballista. I think it's going to be the first one that we're going to actually launch. Um, I'm going to put the ballista on a Duna rendezvous which I mean we still could wait a few days well probably almost like half a year before we're in the ultimate optimum but the difference between optimum is only about what only 800 meters per second You know, when I've got, you know, 15,000 meters per second to play with, you know, the difference between, you know, a 2,400 meter per second round trip and a 16 or 1,700 meters per second round trip doesn't really matter much. So, 
that's what we're going to do. We're going to take up a crew to Ballista, get it fitted for the trip, and we're going to send it to Duna for our second trip to Duna. And, uh, see what we can do there. All right, so let's go ahead and put a crew on board. Uh, the flight crew is going to be Haven, Kerman, and Tamthel. I need to start uh, recruiting some more Kerbals because I am running out Come from the uh, crew on the space station and now the crews that are going to be going out on the... Uh, on the interplanetary vessels. Uh, we're going to need some more crew. So, the crew of the Ballista is going to be Jeb, Valentina, yeah, Bill, and Bob. We're going to send the standard group as our initial crew. Hopefully, I don't screw this up. All right. Let's go ahead and put it on the runway, and let's fly this thing. And I did sort out my uh, my analog controls, so now I should be able to fly this more properly, rather than using the keyboard. Though the keyboard works, does work fine. I don't need the landing guidance right now. All right, throttle up. Light those engines. Down the runway, this thing does get a little, a little goofy, and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. You see it wobbling? Engage the stabilization. Raise the gear. Already over 250 meters per second. All right, now I'm going to start climbing. Start climbing at about 20 degrees. Somewhere between 15,000 and 20,000 meters during the initial kind of acceleration phase. Because much higher than that, definitely higher than 24,000 meters, the engines can't breathe anymore. So.
thousand meters. We are at a thrust to weight ratio of 2.3. Starting to get some shock heating. All right, 14,000 meters per uh, meters. 15,000. I'm gonna start nosing it down a little bit. I'm trying to flatten this trajectory out. The weight ratio is starting to drop off. We're starting to lose speed. Just gonna let this roll for a little bit. That wafts is dropping. Alright, switch over. And engage the other engines. the engines. Now we coast. And then let's set up our maneuver node. I'm going to bring on our maneuver planner so that I can automate some of this. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut off the rapier engines. We're going to just use the standard ones. All right, and then we're going to wait until we get above 70,000 meters. to get the nose in position for the circularization burn. We have 1,200 meters per second of delta V left. There we go, execute the node. Hmm. I don't know why we're not getting any music. It's alright though. All 
All right, it's going to be a 30 second burn in two minutes and 45 seconds. There is something back here that is closing. Now these engines have a lot higher specific impulse. These are around 300 in vacuum, these are 350. Which is why I'm using them. Save that extra little bit of fuel. There we go. There's some music. All right, we are now in orbit. Excellent. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to elevate. Uh, we're going to go prograde. No, not retrograde, prograde. I'm going to elevate into a higher orbit. Around 200. Or, yeah, 200,000 meters, 200 kilometers. All right, and then I want to circularize at the apoapsis, yes. I'm keeping the RCS off and just using the reaction wheels because I want to conserve that RCS. So actually, I don't have a ton. New lander debris. So that's some debris back there, 30 kilometers away. And closing. It shouldn't be a problem, though. Yeah, we're on way different orbital planes. Uh, mono or uh, electric charge is fine. The small solar panels here are providing sufficient power. Yep, and none of these are designed to drop. So we get to orbit with the whole vehicle and we come back with the whole vehicle.
Alright, so this should get us into the proper phasing orbit for rendezvous. Or at least a, a decent phasing orbit for rendezvous. Maybe not the most efficient, but... Alright, and I am going to use the rendezvous autopilot. Um... Because it's just simpler than filling about with uh, maneuver notes for 10 minutes. Alright, there's the Arbalast. No, I want the Ballista. There you are. Alright, so, got a bunch of this to do. So what I might do is just pause while we go to the rendezvous. So I'll be back once we are on our final approach. All right, we are on our final approach to the ballista. We're going to have to get a little bit closer than that, but uh, the autopilot is probably going to take care of that as well. And here is where I'm going to go ahead and throw on the RCS thrusters. Because our maneuvers are going to need to be relatively quick. Let's see, I mean, we are actually getting closer a little bit. Yeah, we're about to start getting further away. Now, I was hoping to use this particular design and just modify it slightly to service as a lander for Leith as well. Problem is that um, fully loaded, this thing is incredibly heavy. It's over 100 metric tons. And it's also fairly large, and you'll see that once we're docked. Then I actually have to dock um, off center with the current positioning of the docking port. Um, in order to be able to not bump into anything else. And in fact, I kind of have to use. That's actually going to be. That's going to be good enough. Disengage the autopilot, please. Open up the docking port. All right, we're going to switch to control from here. Turn on the camera. Expand its size a little bit. So I was saying that um, I'm going to need to use a docking autopilot because um, there is simply too much that I could bump into here that would cause a problem. So I need a very precise docking approach in order to make this work. Right there. That docking port will work. All right.
as you can see, the habitat has been extended. So now we are it's getting reoriented. And it's gonna dock kind of perpendicular here. Yeah, if I tried to do this by hand, I'd almost certainly bump into those solar panels. So we've done this a couple times. Alright, so that's just going to kind of slowly drift into position, so I'll go ahead and jump ahead um, until we are on our final docking approach. Okay, we're coming close to 20 meters out from the docking port. And as you can see, it does get rather close to those solar panels, so... That's what makes me nervous. But it is it is on target and lined up perfectly. The indicators are all over the place. I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's actually flip around. Let's launch the dock. There we go. Successfully docked. And as you can see, from relative size, that oriented in a way that would work for you know, kind of carrying it along on a mission, I don't think would, would work. I mean, I may be able to dock it to this point with the engines pointing forward. If I threw in, because also, uh, this, this nacelle here would definitely bump into the structure here, trying to dock that direction. So I'd need to put some sort of a riser or extension on the docking port here, which wouldn't be hard. It'd just be an extra step.
And then I would definitely need to make sure that I put another weight over here to counterbalance. And then now we're talking 200 extra tons. And yeah. All over the place. Because we're down to, what, 12,000 meters per second in Delta V with this thing docked with it relatively empty. You know, a quarter of the fuel left. It would have to be docked, fully fueled, and ready to go. So, I gotta come up with another solution if for that, if I want to do a space plane um, for Lathe. Which I still do want to do, but I gotta see if I can make this thing smaller, lighter, more compact, and still be able to accomplish what it needs to do. All right, but what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and get our kerbals transferred over. Jebediah, we're going to transfer. We're going to transfer everybody onto the habitation unit. Valentina over there. Bill one over there and Bob over there all right turn the lights on and then start rotation So that's what it looks like inside. Pretty nice, actually. Little, uh, little cabin. <laughs> Alright, and I'm guessing that Valentina probably has the same type of room. No, actually, this is like a uh, kind of like a little common area here. Okay. And where is Bill? There's Bill and Bob. Kind of like another common room here. There's a view out the windows. Very cool. All right. So, crew has been delivered. Artificial gravity is operating. And actually, there's enough room in there, I think, for what? Eight Kerbals? So yeah, everybody should have plenty of room in there. Alright, let's go ahead and undock. Alright. And let's push away. All right, one meter per second away from the vehicle. Let 
Now, the next phase of the mission is to get back home. And I would like to land at KSC. Where exactly is it? There it is. All right, it's going to be on the dark side of the planet. That's not ideal. All right, well, let's go ahead and recontrol from the proper area here. All right, how much monopound do I have left? Oh, I got lots. Okay. All right. Now, there are a few things I need to do before we try to return. It is I need to rebalance the fuel. We need to rebalance the fuel. So, the engine nacelles, which can actually hold some fuel, I'll go ahead and tell them to transfer the fuel in. Because what I want to do is I want to shift all the fuel as far forward as I can. Okay, so you set all set to in. And then I think these are the ones that are kind of the next ones forward. Yep. Alright, in, 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 in. Okay, so now that's all transferred there, I actually want to go ahead and say balance, balance, balance. Balance, balance, balance. Keep everything balanced and forward. All right, same thing here. Oxidizer. Transfer it forward. There we go. Okay, so that's all transferred as far forward as we can because we want to keep that center of gravity to the front. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the engines to drop our apoapsis a little bit. Our periapsis a little bit. 78... Okay, that's good. That just will keep us away from the station. Well, not the station, the um, the ballista for a couple of orbits. Because what I'd like to do... is head back to the Space Center. So I want to advance things a few hours to where KSC is going to be in the daylight because then that's going to be easier. All right, there we go, Dawn. All right. 
So we want to get the sling bow. Fly it. Now, I am going to use the landing guidance module here, but I'm not going to actually autopilot it. I'm going to do this by hand. Mostly. Alright, so... Oh, it turned all the engines on? No, 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 we don't want all the engines on. Just those. All right, so we're actually here now. It's gonna take us a little bit to get on the other side of the planet. Oh, I need to turn on the uh, landing guidance. Uh, show landing predictions. We want show trajectory and world trajectory on. Doesn't that show us shows us the kind of arrow breaking that's gonna happen here? Okay, so that's gonna show us where we're gonna land. And I want to have this a little bit further in front. Okay, I see. Uh, and I'm also kind of just eyeballing it from my previous attempts. That should hopefully be good. Hopefully. All right, 36.2 meters per second. All right, let's go ahead and execute the node. If I have to fly for a little bit to get there, that's fine. Turn the lights off. Oh, auto warp, mark sure that's on. Okay, it's not going to be right. Uh, let's put it in retrograde. Hopefully, that will be right. Okay. Okay, so. 
Now we're going to flip around prograde. And from here on out, everything's going to be on manual. And now, one thing I'm going to do to reduce weight, I'm going to go ahead and dump the oxidizer. Because we should not need it. Let's warp to our atmospheric interface. There we are. Okay, so I want you just to be on stability assist because I want to keep that nose up. So I want to present a somewhat flat target to the airstream so we get some good braking. So I'm going to turn the rocket engines off. I'm going to turn the rapiers on. Could throw in the air brakes, but at this speed, I don't necessarily want to do that just yet. I shouldn't really need them, but we'll see. All right, let's go to four times. So you want to kind of keep that nose around 20 degrees to the horizon. Oh, that's starting to get a little warm there. Both Haven and Tamfell or Tamfell seem to be having some fun there. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not getting any sound here, but it's all right. Oh yeah, looks like we're gonna actually gonna end up short. Let me uh, let me just actually nose forward a little bit. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that's actually starting to make the nose a little bit too hot. Oh 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 oh! Nose up, nose up, nose up.
All right, engage the RCS. Give me a little bit more authority here. Ooh. There we go. There's some sound. Ooh, that's getting uncomfortably warm. Definitely gonna need to hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. All right, gonna have to probably do some S turns here. Probably because I'm in time acceleration. Yeah, there we go. So everything is kind of behaving a little squirrely. All right. Yeah, we've actually slowed down pretty good. All right, let's turn these engines on. Oh, we're in the wrong mode. There we go. That wasn't exactly the cleanest entry, but it's still flying. fast at this point. Throttle down. I probably really only need like half the engines for this stage. Keep it below 300 meters per second. Just barely see the runway. I think we're probably pretty close to being lined up.
Yeah, we're pretty good line. Yeah. See, we're pretty well lined up. Is what I'm actually trying to say there. Liquid fuel's fine. Probably actually want to start losing some altitude. This set uh, distance to ground, not distance to sea level. Probably want to throttle down, start bleeding off some speed. All right, uh, air brakes. Here. All right, let's see if I can get a nice, smooth landing. Uh, a little rough. Not bad. All right, kill the engines. And there we are. Perfect landing. All right. I'm I'm really really happy with this vehicle. The only problem is it's a bit too big, as I said, too big, too heavy. So I have to go back to the drawing board a little bit on that. All right, so let's go ahead and recover. Okay, got our two kerbals back. Looking good. All right, so no, that's not what I want. I actually want to head back and take control of the ballista again because I need to figure out what it is I'm gonna need to bring. Because this thing's going to Duna. The Arbalas is gonna to go to Jewel, and. I need to get a Duna lander. I mean, I have one. It should work. I just need to figure out how much more life support I'm going to need to bring. Okay, there we are. All right, so. What I want to figure out is how much life support do we have on board? Uh, oh, I actually need to move some people around, I think. One thing we need to start life support here. And I need to start agroponics. And now, what does it say? The ballista has 
Now, four years, 181 days worth of life support on board. The Kerbal on one station, two years, 355 days. Okay. How long is it going to take us to get to Duna? Plot it. If we were to leave now. Or relatively close to now. I'm just going to keep... I'm not worried about that right now. Let's see. Travel time, 342 days. So, not quite a year. Now, we would have to sit... Duna to Kerbin. For... For a while. Let's see. Departure year 18, day 207. That would be what? Where we would arrive back year 19, day 50. Okay. Your 19 day 50 as we get back home. So we have what? Four years, 300 days? Sixteen day sixty two. So nineteen day fifty is three years total travel time. It could work. It can work. As long as there's no complications. I might take up a little extra anyway. All right, so the next thing I need to do is start tinkering with the space plane design. Um, yeah, start stink, uh, tinkering with the space plane design and um, see if I can't get something smaller and lighter that will work. So I think I'll probably do that off screen. So this is probably where we're going to stop for today. So for now, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you next time.